I'm Dr. Liz from the California Science Center, and I'm here to help you feel a little less stuck at home. This week, we've been learning all about biology. And when it comes to biology, there's one really important molecule that I want you to know about. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid. Hmm, but that's a big, long mouthful of a word. So we're gonna call it DNA for short. Now, this is a really important molecule because it's found in every single living thing in our planet. That means we have DNA, our friends and family have DNA, our pets have DNA, and other living things like plants, which means the fruits and vegetables we eat um, have DNA, and even things like mushrooms have DNA. So what is DNA? Well, it's a super small molecule. It's so small that we can't actually see it, even with a microscope. So we're gonna have to use a different kind of technique to try to see DNA and know that it exists. Um, so we're gonna do an activity today that takes a living thing. We're gonna take a, a fruit from my kitchen and we are going to extract the DNA out of it. And so what that means is we're gonna separate all of the teeny tiny DNA molecules from that fruit and we're gonna put it all in a big pile in a big clump and look at it. And so we can actually see that DNA from that living thing. All right, so to start out, I have a tomato that I found in my kitchen. I haven't been to the grocery store in a while, so this is what I was able to find, but really any fruit should work. Uh, in fact, if you download today's activity, it's all about fruits. So this is a great follow-up activity to do with that fruit that you've investigated in that activity. All right, so the first thing I need to do is put my tomato or whatever fruit I'm using, hopefully something kind of squishy like a strawberry or a banana works really well for this. Um, I'm gonna put it in a bag. I'm gonna seal that really tight so I don't make a big mess. And I am gonna start squishing it up. I am physically mashing up this tomato so that I start to break down all of its component parts. There's another thing that all living things have in common besides having DNA, and that's that all living things are made out of cells. These are also super small, but we can see them with a microscope. Um, and I'm thinking about cells because the DNA that's in living things is actually found inside of the cells that make up living things. So in order to extract DNA, what we first need to do is get that DNA out of the cells. All right, so that's I'm looking pretty mashed up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is open this up and add a little bit of my lysis buffer. So this is a solution of water, salt, and dish soap, all things I found in my kitchen, that is going to help lice or break open all of the cells in that tomato. So don't need too much, just enough to kind of mix up with all of the tomato that I mushed up. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help me actually bust open, crack open all of the cells from this tomato. Uh, that dish soap that I mentioned that's in this lysis buffer is really important for that. Uh, the soapy molecules inside of dish soap actually interact with the outside of cells and break it open. So what we're doing right now, even though we can't see it, is we're cracking all of those little tomato cells open so we have a chance of separating out all their DNA. I'm gonna do this for a little while to make sure things are really well mixed. I still have to be a little careful not to get too excited and break my bag. It's a lot of fun to do this. All right, I think I'm gonna say that's good enough. We're not gonna be able to ever break down every single part of this. Some parts of uh, fruits and plants are really fibrous and tough. So like my tomato skins are still in here. I'm never gonna break those down, but that's okay because the next step to doing this extraction is to strain this. So I'm gonna separate all the chunky stuff that I couldn't break down from all of the kind of goofy parts that have my DNA and my cells. And so what I'm doing here is I'm taking a coffee filter and I'm making a little filter for myself. Um, you can do this with a strainer, you could do this with some cheesecloth, really, again, whatever you can find around the house. Um, we're gonna see how this works. I, I put a rubber band around it just to Try to secure it on so I don't make too much of a mess, although <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going to try to carefully start to pour this into my filter. I'm going to have to do this in a couple batches. Ooh, that's really, really sudsy. All right. 
Sometimes it helps to get something you can kind of stir with. And it's, it's starting to, there we go. Once the filter paper, the, the coffee filter gets a little wet, things start to go in. Be careful not to poke a hole in the filter, but that's starting to look right. I'm gonna add a little more just to make sure we have enough DNA collected. It's really sudsy because of all that soap I added to crack open the cells, all that dish soap. But you can see I'm, I'm actually collecting quite a bit of poopy stuff there. So I think I'm gonna stop there. I know I have more in the bag. You can do a few extractions with a big piece of fruit like a tomato. But I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna carefully remove my coffee filter, try not to make too much of a mess. It's looking really sudsy. You might want to let those bubbles die down just a little bit. We'll see how this goes. Um, but right now, what I have basically is, is tomato cell soup. I have a mixture of all of the kind of busted open contents of all of the cells from my tomato, including all of the DNA that was inside of those cells. So right now, I still can't see that DNA uh, because it's all mixed up and dissolved in this tomato cell soup. So my last step for this experiment is to actually separate and isolate the DNA from this mixture. And I'm gonna do that using rubbing alcohol. So I have some isopropanol, some isopropyl rubbing alcohol that I got at the drugstore. Uh, this is 70%, that'll work. If you can find 95%, that'll work even better. Um, and I had it over here in a little ice bath because I've been storing it in the freezer because this experiment really works best if you keep this super cold, it really as cold as possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this isopropanol and I'm gonna add maybe about a one-to-one -one ratio. So about as much liquid as I have in here, I'm gonna add the same amount of isopropanol. And when I add it, I'm gonna be really careful to not mix the isopropanol together with this solution. The isopropanol is less dense than this solution, so it's actually gonna float on top if I pour it really carefully. I'm gonna pour it down the side of this container. I'm gonna do it really slowly and carefully so that it kind of just stays on top. I have lots of bubbles still from my, <laughs> from my lysis buffer. So those are actually floating on top of the isopropanol. So you can actually see I have sort of three layers right now. I have my tomato cell soup, I have my isopropanol, and I have leftover bubbles. Now what that isopropanol does is it's going to help precipitate our DNA, which means that it's gonna make the DNA come out of this cell tomato soup on the bottom and actually form kind of a solid chunk at the layer in between where the isopropanol and the cell tomato soup meet. So you want to just give that a little bit of time to form. I'm starting to see some bubbles form. I'm looking at this. And those bubbles are telling me that some DNA is, is precipitating. So you, want to, you don't want to mix this up too much. But at some point, after you've given, given it a second to sit, you should be able to go in here and find sort of some goopy Goopy chunks. Hmm. Not sure I had enough separation, so this isn't working quite as well as I'd hoped. But what you should get is basically a big blob of DNA that you can separate uh, from that chunky stuff. Hmm. Well, maybe let's try this with one other kind of fruit. I prepared this ahead of time. This is a bunch of lemon rinds that I processed in my blender and I mixed it up with some salt and uh, dish soap, just like we did with our lysis buffer. So that's been sitting there. I have lemon cell soup here. 
And I'm going to try adding some isopropanol to this. We're going to do the same thing we just did. There we go. And I think that's working. That's much easier to see. You can start to see some you know, wispy, kind of cold, so it's getting some condensation, but you can see some wispy white strands forming all around the surface of this lemon juice. All of those wispy white strands are actually DNA molecules, lots and lots of DNA molecules clumped together. So we might be able to fish some of these out using either a toothpick or a chopstick kind of swirl it around, grab some like it's almost like it's some cotton candy. And if I can pull it out, it's getting there. I can actually get these sort of clumpy strands. So that is actually some lemon DNA that I've extracted. So I can do this with all kinds of fruits, vegetables, even lentils, beans, anything in my kitchen that came from a plant or an animal or a fungus, any kind of living thing. I can do this extraction and I can isolate DNA. You can even do this with your own cells. If you swish a little salt water around in your mouth, you can collect some cheek cells uh, and use those to do a DNA extraction and see your own DNA. And so DNA is inside all of living cells because DNA acts like a set of directions for how living things sort of build themselves and grow and develop. You can kind of think about DNA as being a set of recipes for how to make a living thing. Um, the DNA inside of your bodies is a collection of recipes for how to build a human. The DNA inside of a fish is a collection of recipes for how to build a fish. Lemons have a collection of recipes for how to build lemons. But all living things are united by this common sort of language of DNA. Uh, so I hope you'll go try this at home. Check out today's activity. And uh, thanks for joining us live. I hope you're feeling a little less stuck at home and we'll see you next time. Be sure to visit our website Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. for more stuck at home science activities.